Hello again. Okay, so we're now, all of us, are rosin experts. We bought, our, bought ourselves blocks of rosin. We've practiced and practiced and practiced and we've got lovely facets all the way around the edge of our block. Now we don't even need to look anymore because we know what that sounds like when we apply the rosin, when the strings aren't on. Did I say why they don't have the strings on? It's because if you've got one of the strings on, you put the rosin on, any loose bits that may come off of the rosin block are all going to end up getting stuck right underneath that first string that the bits encounter underneath the cotton there and then you'll need to change the cotton okay this is part two changing the cotton oh well and, add, and adding it okay this um is a d hurdy-gurdy which means the chanters the melody strings are in d it's a french style tuning so we've got a high d we've got a low d um I don't know if I'm in tune or not, I haven't checked. That's not the purpose of this video. It's probably around D-ish. Um, I use um, Savarez. Um, it's a make, a French make, um, called Savarez. And this string is a viola um, D string. This is the D hurdy-gurdy. That string is D, it's a viola D. That's a medium gauge. Um, actually, do you know what? Sod's law. I don't think this is a Severus. This might be another one. Anyway, I ignore that. I use Severus, don't I? Um, now, the trouble with it is um, they sound great, of course. That's not the trouble with it. They sound great. The problem comes, though, with um, taking off the cotton wool, which you'll need to do periodically if it gets damaged, looks rubbish, starts to sound squeaky or horrible. Blah, 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 blah. Could be a million reasons why you might want to change your cotton wool. Um, it's a nylon core string. Here is the problem. Next, it's got an uh, aluminium winding. Fragile, very fragile. Also, they're expensive, they're about 15 bucks. Oh man. So when we're getting our um, cotton wool off, it would help greatly if you hadn't used liquid rosin to stick it on. Yeah, um, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, because it, makes it much harder to get the cotton wool off. Though I suppose you can use neat alcohol, can't you, to um, as a solvent to um, start to help release some of this stickiness. Um, but we're gonna try and get this cotton wool off and the only way, and they'll put this cotton on by first um, putting rosin, rubbing my block of rosin, that fella, across the string gently so that we don't break the aluminium windings. Very important, very expensive. I'm turning the handle backwards, as you can see, periodically, just to start to loosen that cotton wool. And then um, with our finest, cleanest fingers, which I don't seem to ever have, we're picking to pick off that cotton, aren't we? Um, without, um, what you don't want to do is go <laughs> backwards and forwards with your fingernail, because that will destroy those precious windings that we're so worried about. And we are worried about them. Um, okay, so we've got my block of rosin. This is the old block, original block from part one that I've used forever. Damn it, we'll use the recommendation of Gregory Jolivet, the French hurdy gurdy player. Not very good. <laughs> no, he's very good. He's the player, he's the man. This is what he uses. We'll do that. Um, we're going to lift our string up with our thumb and we're going to try and get some rosin on. Um, the string. Right, ready for listening again? Any louder than that and you'll be definitely, I would imagine, risking damaging them windings. Okay, now we need some cotton wool. Oh, blimey, didn't think of that. Okay, some cotton wool. This is um, <laughs> uh, finest 100% um, viscose. It's what I use. I don't use natural cotton, which is the long strands of beautifully elegant stuff that comes in a great big skein in a beautifully packaged. It's crap. It's far too slippery, far too shiny. Don't like it. I use man-made, 100% viscose. And what you want this cotton to do, apparently you can use tampon cotton if you want, or the cotton from the top of medicine bottles. There's all sorts of recommendations out there, as all you guys are no doubt aware. But what you want the cotton to be able to do is to be teasable in lovely long straight lines like that. Do you get me? Do you get me? Just like that. 
Um, now for a charter, um, we want less cotton than we would normally use for a base drone. Base drones have metal windings on them. Hear that? That's round wound gut or nylon, depending on what string you've got. But anyway, it's gonna have a metal winding on it of some kind and it needs to be round wound, not flat wound. Flat wound strings tend to have a steel core and they run at much higher tension. They're horrible and cheap, nasty. Um, nylon core, please, or gut, whatever. I use dominant cello tomastic strings. Tomastic is the make, um, they're German, Austrian, something like that. Um, dominant is the name of the type of string that they sell. And this is a cello G string. It plays the putty board on D or C. There should be a string just about here, which is the cello C, which plays the G. You can wind them up to an A, but prepare for your hurdy gurdy to explode. I wouldn't do it. F and G is just about what you want. If you did want that this cello string to be an A, you'd want a capo a G really to give you that one extra note up from the G, so that the tension is remained kept at constant. Um, anyway, this is a chanter string, so we're going to use the amount of cotton that we use for chanter strings, which is that much. Just did you see that? Do that again. Right, hold on to your butts. That much. Yeah, that's about right for a second chanter. Don't worry, you'll get used to how much to use. Um, okay, it sounds rubbish at the moment. That's because a wooden wheel, freshly rosined, is being is bowing a metal string with not no without any cotton wool on it. That's not good, is it? So to get the cotton wool onto that string, you would have needed to have watched part one because you will need a nice rosined wheel to be able to do it with. Um, so the rosin is the wheel is sticky enough to drag the first part of the fibres underneath the back of that underneath the back of that string. So middle finger, middle finger, middle finger. Hook it under there. Then with your other two, you with your thumb and your first finger, you're going to aim for underneath, underneath the back of the string from that direction down that way that way underneath the string and to help the cotton wool get under there turning the wheel done half help okay you can see it's starting to pick up and if you lower the with your middle finger you start to lower the string onto the wheel the cotton wool starts to wind itself on as if by magic and then you give it a little twizzle at the end ha <laughs> ha actually it's slightly too much why do i think that because it looks like a duvet. That's why I think there's too much. You'll get used to that. Sounds all right to me. Okay, first chanter. You can be a bit rougher this, rougher with this, because this is a bit of badminton racket string. Oh yes, um, it's black. Comes in lovely colours. Black's the cool one. Um, now for a first chanter, this, we're heading into the string pressure territory, I realise that, but for a high D string, you want the string to just be skating on the edge of the wheel, really, just like that. And then by the time we've got our cotton wool on, that'll have increased the pressure on the wheel just enough to make that work really good. Let's get another bit, sorry, bang the camera. Okay, let's try that again then, shall we? This is a first chanter, so we'll be using slightly less cotton wool than we did for our second chanter, and well less than we'd use for the bass drones. Second chanter is about the same thickness, same note as the trumpet and the moose string, use about the same cotton wool for them, it matters less. The important thing about cotton wool on the chanters is that you do it the same every time. Do you know why that is? Because you've tuned your tangents um, to sound good against the drone, have you not? And if you change the amount of cotton wool that you've just put on, you've changed the speed of the string because it, whilst it doesn't weigh much, it does weigh something. And it'll affect the tonality of the tangents. In fact, there may be no getting away with it every now and then, even if you're an expert, you've got perfect atmospheric conditions, you put the same amount of cotton wool on each time, the rosin is perfect, you've got the world's greatest hurdy gurdy, you still end up having to mess with a couple of them. Don't worry about it. 
this is a, it's a medieval wooden machine don't forget it's not a digital computer it's analog and you mustn't agonize over this stuff and start boring everyone to death on the forums by oh my hurdy gurdy made a squeak the other day it's gonna squeak mine squeak everything squeaks um, don't worry about it anyway so this is a uh, plastic nylon type string it's a badminton racket you can use um, string you can use gut and the type of gut I use for this is 0 0.70 of a me of a millimeter thick actually I use 0 0.71 but that's because that's the type of that's the, su the supplier supplies that and it's by CHD well, maybe a British thing I don't know anyway but it's 0 0.7 ish of a millimeter for the high D chanter you don't need to be quite so um, careful over this because it's a much tougher string, hasn't got aluminium windings. There's nothing really to break. If it was a gut string and you did it really rough, okay, you may end up tearing some of the gut. But this is um, this stuff's bulletproof. Can you hear that? I'm making less noise so you can hear me putting the rotten on. Anyway, back to the cotton. Slightly less than the second chanter. Hmm. Yeah? Again, middle finger, show it the bird. Aim the cotton underneath that first chanter. Lower the string. And if by super magic, oh, I have done it before, it goes on nice, doesn't it? Why I'm doing that is um, partly to show off, but also to show you that if you um, if you do that straight away, do that shaky backwards and forwards business with your handle, okay, there is a risk. Well, there is more than a risk. The cotton wool is going to try and unravel itself. I tend to reserve all that showy stuff for when I know the cotton wool's got a bit more stuck on and after I've added some rosin a few times so that it's, uh, the cotton wool's definitely on there. You can use liquid rosin, I guess, for that. If you add liquid liquid rosin, it would definitely stick that cotton wool down perfect, but I don't do the shaky backwards and forwards thing often enough to even bear it any mind. If it still sounds a bit um, skatey, like it does now, fair play, it does, doesn't it? Then with, um, you've got your paper on, it's, you're virtually in the right shop. You may need to just now, to increase the pressure a bit, you want to compress that bit of paper that's under the bridge just by a billionth what will end up being a billionth of a millimetre. These are the sort of levels we're on about now. That is achieved simply by putting your finger one side, your finger the other side, and pressing that string down onto that, onto that bridge. And that's compressing the paper, isn't it? Which is making the, they're making the pressure increase on the wheel. Still a bit skatey. So we'll take that paper out. This is where you um, clever birds with your um, adjustable bridged bridges and your adjustable screw thread, whatchamacallits, have got the advantage over me. Um, but I often wonder if having lots and lots of things that can, lots and lots of parameters that can so easily be changed with a flick of a, a screwy wheel like some of you guys have got down there to raise and lower, having all of those options can end up being a bit confusing. Um, you can lose sight of where you are if you've changed everything within a few seconds. If things are a bit harder to deal with, then maybe that will tempt you into finding other reasons why something sounds weird. And that's probably a good thing, isn't it? That sounds a bit more creamy now, I think. I've taken out one of the layers of paper. I'll compress it down a bit. It's about right, it's probably still a bit skatey. Anyway, video's going on too long. Good luck, that's how I do cotton wool. Um, for drones, use plenty. You can be at home to Mr. and Mrs. Duvet when it comes to a bass drone. Get plenty on. Lovely.